Hey guys, it's Kisara, and today I'm gonna to be doing my May week four reading vlog. So in the month of May, if you've been following my reading vlogs, I've been in kind of a reading slump and I've been doing pretty much just rereads. But last week I managed to get some new books read, which I'm really excited about. And I'm hoping to continue on that with this week. So if you haven't seen that vlog, I will link it up in the cards for you guys, because it was a great reading week for me. And as always, I'm going to start off this week with the books that I'm currently reading. So the first book that I'm currently reading is Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. Suzanne Collins has kind of been my hero this month, because even though I haven't been able to pick up very much, I have been able to pick up her book and I read pretty much all of her books this month, like all of the Hunger Games, all of the Underlying Chronicles, which are both series that I had previously read. So I was excited that she had another book coming out this month and I decided to pick it up. This is not what I was expecting going in. It's a lot slower than all of her other books and it's a little bit more character focused, which I kind of expected with President Snow. It's also really themed focused, so it reminds me a little bit of the ending of Mockingjay and the ending of the Gregor and the Code of Claw, like it has some of the, a lot of the themes from those books already at the very beginning of this book, which is interesting to me. And we also kind of get to see like the background of the Hunger Games and how it became what it was when Katniss ended up becoming part of the Hunger Games. So that was really interesting to me as well. I'm not super far into it though. Only about a third of the way into the book, so there's still a significant amount of this book left and hopefully I'll end up liking it because Apparently not that many people have liked it so far, but I still really want to. I also picked up The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. This is the fifth book in the Percy Jackson series. The Percy Jackson series is not a reread for me. Like this is my first time reading the series for the first time all the way through. I'm really, really excited to read The Last Olympian. I'm about halfway through it now and I'm really enjoying it. Like I'm really excited to see how this is going to end and I've really liked Percy and all of his endeavors so far. So I'm really glad to be reading this one. And the last book that I'm still currently reading is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire by J.K. Rowling. So this is my reread of the Harry Potter series in which I'm reading the illustrated editions and annotating the paperbacks. I'm doing this really really slowly so I don't plan on finishing it this week. I am pretty far into it actually. I'm right there so there's like I want to say like 40% of the book left, so a pretty significant amount. But of course, I'm enjoying this so much right now because this is one of my favorite series of all time. And I just like living in this world while I'm reading the series. So I'm really enjoying this reread as well. But tonight, I'm going to be going to sleep soon. I just have the urge to pick up something new. So as of right now, my plan is to pick up Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. So, so far this month, I've pretty much completely ignored my TBR. The only books on my TBR that I've actually read were The Hunger Games, which I was supposed to read the first book, only the first book, because it was my reread for the month, and then Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, because it was my new release for the month. So those are the only two books that were actually on my TBR that I've read. But I want to try and get back to my main TBR and read some of my main TBR books in the last week. Blood Song is one of those books on my May TBR. It's part of my fantasy book series challenge. And it's the book that I'm probably the most excited for that is on my TBR. And I'm just in the mood to read something new right now. So I figured it was a good time. I don't know anything about this book other than it's like an adult fantasy and it's Grimdark fantasy, I believe. And Anthony Ryman is an author that I'm really intrigued by and I'm excited to read more of his stuff. So hopefully I'll end up liking this. So if this is gonna be a pretty quick update. It's Sunday night, I have to go to sleep really soon so that I can wake up really early to go to work. But I finished The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan, which is the last book in the Percy Jackson series. I absolutely loved it. Like towards the end of this book, I was starting to get the same feelings that I got from the Underland Chronicles, which is one of my favorite middle grade series of all time. So I really like that aspect of it. And like, I have zero complaints with this book. Like I loved every second of it. So I ended up giving it five stars. I'm so happy that I read that series because it was one that like I didn't read when I was younger. So I felt like I maybe would just skip over that series because I kind of missed my time for it. But I'm really glad that I decided to pick it up anyway because it's a fantastic series that 
I know is going to potentially be one of my favorites. I do want to continue on and read some of the other Olympian series as well. So if you guys have any recommendations of what to read after the Percy Jackson series, let me know down in the comments. Also, last night I did start Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. So for my initial impressions, I'm really, really excited for this. My first thoughts were, I really like the writing, which is always a good thing. And it has some like classic fantasy tropes that I like because it's kind of like a story within a story because the prologue is told from one perspective but it's about a chronicler meeting a character who is a prisoner at this time and then the prisoner starts telling the chronicler his story and it's about the prisoner of Balin Al Sorna and I'm really excited about it like I'm really really excited about it. It gives me reminiscent feelings of the name of the wind because of that aspect of it but in the place where Valen Alsorna is actually talking about, it gives me kind of like the same vibes as the Night Watch in A Song of Ice and Fire. So like I'm getting like Voth slash Jon Snow vibes, which is an interesting combination and I'm excited to see where this is going. Like I'm really excited about it. I'm definitely going to be continuing this tonight before I go to bed. So it is Thursday, May 28th. I haven't updated you guys in the last couple of days or so and that's because I haven't been reading as much as I typically would and I think part of that is I have to keep reminding myself that like coming out of a reading slump it's not like a light switch where like you flip it on or you flip it off and you're suddenly you're one day you're in a reading slump and the next day you're not like it's more like a dimmer switch where like it'll take a little while for me to get back to the level where I was reading you know like 20 books a month like no problem so I'm reading a bit slower than I typically would of the same books that I was reading before but like if I find a book that's easier to read I can read that one a little bit faster so for example I have made progress on blood song by Anthony Ryan I'm right about there now so I'm just about to start part two and I love it so far like every second that I've read this book I've loved it there's so much character growth already just in the first part I love the main character villain Al Sorna I love the way that the story is written I think Anthony Ryan's writing style is beautiful and I really enjoy it and I'm really excited to see more of this world and these characters and what's actually gonna happen because there's a lot that's happened so far in this book even though I feel all of that while I'm actively reading it I have no motivation to pick it up when I'm not reading it, if you know what I mean. While I'm enjoying this, this is not motivating me to continue reading more. The other book that I'm actively currently reading is Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. And I'm a little bit further along in this one. I'm about halfway through it now. So this one, I feel like I could read easier, like it's a little bit easier to read, but I feel like the content itself is not necessarily what I want right now. And I think it's partially because while I like a good villain story, I don't think Susan Collins necessarily writes villains that well. Like even with the actual villains, like because the main character in this is Snow before he was president. So it's kind of like how he got to that level, which obviously Snow is a villain. Like he is not a good character in the Hunger Games trilogy. But this is kind of his backstory. So he's supposed to be like a likable character or at least a character that you love to hate in this book, which I don't think I've gotten to that level yet with Snow. I still just don't like him as a character but even in this book there are villains that are people worse than Snow like Dr. Gall is one of those in this book and in my mind I draw similar parallels of Dr. Gall with Professor Umbridge from the Harry Potter series because they have similar sort of storylines. Unlike Dr. Gall with Professor Umbridge you really get to understand her motivations and she feels like a real person. She's not just this crazy cat lady who likes to torture her students, which I mean, she is a crazy cat lady who likes to torture her students, but she, you also kind of understand her as a person and her mindset and what motivates her to all of that, which I feel like with Dr. Gall, she just seems kind of like a crazy person who likes to not necessarily torture her students, but gravely injure them for no reason. And you don't really, get to see what her motivations behind that are like she just seems like a crazy person. Suzanne Collins is so good at writing likable characters that I don't think the unlikable characters are really her forte and this book is really about unlikable characters. Now mind you I do enjoy it while I'm reading it but I do feel like this book is just not what I was hoping for it to be if you know what I mean. While I am enjoying this one and I definitely plan on finishing it before the end of the week it's another one that's really not motivating me to pick up any more books. Because of all of that, I decided to start something light and easy to read. So I decided to pick up Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So this book is from my most recent book haul. I got this from the Book of the Month Club and this is a 
adult romantic contemporary novel and it has good diversity in it because the main character is black and her love interest is white. She also suffers from fibromyalgia and she is on the larger side. So like there's a lot of good diversity and representation in there and it's just a fun easy book to read that I'm really really enjoying so far. I do think there are some things that annoy me a little bit about this book and I think it's not necessarily the book specifically. I think it's just like the romance genre in general. Like I don't need to be reminded of her tits or his cock every other page. Like I really don't need to be. But like that's just a part of the romance genre that if you're gonna read romance books you, you can't really get away from unless you read only YA romance books but that's neither here nor there. I do think this is really well written so far. Also I think that like if I wasn't coming out of a slump those things wouldn't annoy me as much as they currently are. So far I'm really enjoying this book. I'm pretty far into it too. I'm right there. I started this book yesterday mind you and I've read like two-thirds of it now so I definitely plan on finishing it today and hopefully I'll end up loving the ending because I can see where it's going and I'm excited for it. So it is still Thursday. I just finished Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So this book was easy to read. It was fun. It was uplifting. It was your typical romantic contemporary that I was just looking for something that I could actually read really fast and this definitely hit the spot. I don't think it's one of the best books that I've ever read but it was a very enjoyable book that I really enjoyed and I liked the ending of it. It was just a feel-good book that made me happy so I'm really glad that I picked up this book and I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. Okay so it's Friday May 29th and I have about an hour left in Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and I have about an hour drive or so because I'm going away for the weekend for a little bit so I'll probably finish it while I'm on the drive. I don't know how I feel about it because I've been pretty into this book the last like 24 hours or so. I feel like ever since the Hunger Games ended everything that comes after it I've been like actually really invested in. There is one thing I still don't like about this book and that's snow. Like I feel like if I liked him as a character or at least loved to hate him, if you know what I mean, then I would really enjoy this book. But I've never gotten attached to Snow. Like even the fact that I still call him Snow in my head is not good because he's referred to as Coriolanus in this book. The only time he's referred to as Snow is in the Hunger Games. So trying to detach him from the original Hunger Games trilogy is really hard for me right now. And I feel like part of it is just like, he seems almost emotionless in this one. Like there's supposed to be like a romantic subplot in here, but I don't feel it at all. And I think that's part of the reason why this book is not working for me as well as her other books have. But I've about an hour left in it. So we'll see how I feel about that. Okay, so I just finished Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins and I loved the ending. Like I really, really like the ending which I mean I was so ready to do a rant review on this book but then that goes and happens and I really like the ending like it was the exact type of ending that I would have won from this book and it made me feel the way about Coriolanus Snow in the way that I've been wanting to all book long so yeah I don't know how to talk about the ending without giving away like lots and lots of spoilers but yeah, it was good. I really liked the ending. So it is Sunday, May 31st, and over the last couple of days, I made a bit of progress on Blood Song by Anthony Ryan. I am still really enjoying this. I'm excited to see where it's going because it's getting intriguing and we're getting more background stuff into what the story is actually about. So I'm really excited for that. I am right about there now. I am reading a lot slower than I have been. I'm just not in the mood to read quickly I guess is the way to do it. It's not even that like if it's easy to read I can read it quickly but things that are a little bit harder that I would typically read just as quickly I'm not which is weird for me like for example I was driving home today it was like an hour drive like it's not a short drive I started with Blood Song and even though I'm enjoying Blood Song and I like it I couldn't read it for the whole drive like I didn't want like to think about something like this during that drive. I just wanted something that was easy and light. So I started a different book that was a lot lighter and easier to read. So yeah, I'm having a weird time with reading recently, 
but overall I did have a pretty good week because I ended up finishing three books. So the first book that I finished was The Last Olympian by Rick Riordan. It was fantastic. I absolutely loved it and I ended up giving it five stars. Definitely a series that I want to continue on with. Obviously the, the Last Olympian is the last book in that series, but I looked it up and The Lost Hero, I believe, is the next book that I should be reading in like the Heroes of Olympus or whatever. So I actually own that one because I bought that one way back when it first came out, which was like after the Purchase Action series, obviously, but I'm excited to get to that one. I'm probably not gonna pick it up like right away, but I am excited to get to it because the Percy Jackson series was fantastic. I really enjoyed it and I can't wait to read more in that universe. I also finished Get a Life Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. And this is the type of book that I've really been excelling at reading because everything else I just feel like is a little too hard to read or too dark right now and then this is a contemporary romance it's supposed to be funny i did find it funny at times i didn't find it like hilarious which is what i was really hoping for but i did find it very uplifting and i liked that about it so this is about a late 20s early 30s young woman who wants to get a life because she's chronically ill and because of that she doesn't have as much of a social life as she previously has so she's trying to get a life back basically and like one of the first things that she has to do is move out she creates this list and she is following that list and she meets someone along the way. It's it's a romantic contemporary, you know what happens in those books. And it was light and fun and I enjoyed it and I ended up giving it 4.25 stars. And lastly, I did manage to finish Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by Suzanne Collins. This was a lot different than I expected it to be. I think the first like 95% of this book had me leaning in a certain direction because this is about President Snow, but it's kind of like his origin story. So it's like a villain story. But like, I feel like with all good villain stories, you need to somehow love the villain. Whether it's because you love the actual character or you just love to hate them, you have to feel very strongly about them. And I did not feel very strongly about Snow until about the last 5%. And I felt like that was the story that I was looking for the entire time that I wasn't getting. So I loved, loved the ending really really love the ending but i didn't like the first like 95 percent of this book and i understand why some people wouldn't like the ending just because it really didn't feel like this book was moving in that direction but it kind of was because i mean snow always lands on top i wish i could have loved this book more than i did because i feel like i could have absolutely loved this book but it didn't quite turn out as well as i'd wanted it to so i ended up giving it 3.75 stars so that is all i have for you guys today let me know down in the comments if you guys have read any of these books because i would love to discuss with you guys if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up to support my channel all social media links are in the description down below i post videos on sundays tuesdays thursdays and saturdays so consider subscribing i also post bonus videos so if you want to be notified as soon as they upload you can click that little bell icon Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!